I think if you give it a little bit of thought, you realize that we need both faith and works. Now, Protestant brothers and sisters, um, sometimes we think that all they want to do is talk about faith and not works, and they look at us and think that we want to talk about works and not faith, but both traditions honestly believe that you need both. And, and it makes sense. All you have to do is just ask yourself, what happens to someone that only works, has no faith? You know, just someone that maybe you know, a very nice person who donates time and talent, whatever. They're just a really nice person, but they have no faith. But you realize what happens, you know, their, their works, if you will, all that can be taken away. And if you have no faith, well then, you know, what, what do you've got? It's, you're just coming up a little short. Likewise, as James points out in the second reading, faith, if you don't have any works with it, that's just dead. Because how will you even, you're not demonstrating that you have faith. You're not living it out. I mean, it's easy to say, oh yeah, yeah, I believe in God. But if you're not even willing to come to church, as you folks did this morning, you know, what does that say about your faith? Do you really have any faith? So they both matter. And, and it's important for us to keep that in mind. We start our spiritual journey with faith. It is the good Lord, by his grace, that, that gets us on the path. But then after that, we have to respond. And so this reading turns out to be a terrific reading for us as we start our time and talent stewardship campaign. Now, I know some of you, right about then, you know, your stomach turned just a little bit. The word stewardship, the word campaign, maybe some bad memories came up. Uh, I hope that's not the case. Because you have to understand, all we are going to do for the next three weeks is we want to look at the idea of stewardship. For some of you, this is going to be a bit of a review. For others of you, maybe it's all new to you. Uh, you know, for the, the teens, the youngins here, you guys need to learn this too. And all we want to do is just try to grow in our understanding of what it means to be a steward and then see where that takes us. That's our goal for the three weeks. And so let's start at the beginning. Stewardship is based on the idea, on the truth, that everything you and I have, our time, our talent, and yes, our money, all that stuff comes from God. And, and for some people, that's hard to get their head around, you know, because they think, wait, I got paid on Friday, and that money is mine because I earned it. I get that. But if you would broaden your thinking a little bit, you realize that it is the good Lord that is behind the fact that you have a talent that is uh, available, you know, that you can use. You're good at, at your job. You have that talent. And maybe even the good Lord got you the job in some way. Maybe you could look at it that way. But in one way or another, if you, you trace everything back, it all ends up starting with God. And so then you say, well, okay, God has given me this stuff, but he's given it to me, if you will, with a charge. He wants us to be good stewards of it, to take care of it. Or to put it better, ask yourself the question, what is the best use of whatever it is? So take, for example, time. We're not all given the same number of days in our lives, but we're all given the same 24 hours in every day. And so the question for us is, well, what is the best use of my time? So as you got in a car to come over here, you had decided the best use of this hour was coming to Mass. I would agree, of course. But I don't want you to think that the answer to the question, what's the best use, is always oh, well, I, 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 I should always pray, or I should always read my Bible, or I should always do whatever. And it's not true at all. I mean, later tonight, all of us are going to make a decision that the best use of that time is to go to bed, because we need some sleep. There will be times when you will say, well, the best use of this time is to, get the, is to go out to dinner or lunch with family or friends. That's a great use of time. 
It's just our, the job is just in those moments to ask, what is the best use of this time? It also helps if you think of moments where you have wasted time. You know, maybe you got on the computer because you just wanted to check, you know, something, look something up, makes sense, but suddenly you got yourself all caught up watching cat videos or something, and you might look at that and say, well, that was probably not the best use of my time. In terms of talents, it's the same thing. You have to ask yourself, first, what talents do I have? And then, what's the best use of those talents? The problem, I think, for most people in this regard is that um, you'll meet lots of people and they say, well, I don't have any talents. And that's wrong, but I know why you're, I think you're thinking that. Because somehow, uh, some people just have this idea that if they were to list out all the possible talents somebody might have, they, they end up with a really small list. It's stuff mostly that they, um, they see you know, in society. So I don't have the talent to be a speaker. I don't have the talent to be a great singer. I don't have the talent to be a great athlete. You know, those sort of things. And it's a very small list. And especially as people get older, they think, well, I used to be able to do this stuff, but I can't do it now, so I don't have any more talents. But let me encourage you to expand that list. I mean, a long, long, long way. If I could give you a dumb and silly example, um, it was pointed out to me yesterday that I have quite a talent with weeds. I, yes, weeds, you know, the things you pull out of the ground, because uh, we were doing some improvements, uh, putting some stone edging around the trees back behind the church, and there was some torpedo grass there, and I was able, rather than just pull off the top of it, I understand how torpedo grass grows, and I was able to get down and get all of the roots, and I, and the people that were there with me, we didn't know you could do that. Well, I have a talent for weeds. And I don't want you to discount these small things. I mean, no one's going to give you a $3 million contract to listen to your neighbor when they need you to listen. No one's going to do that. And so it's not a talent that our society necessarily values. But any of us that have ever had somebody listen to us when we needed to be listened to, we appreciate how important that is. You know, the idea of writing a note to somebody, calling them, all those things, those are, those are all talents. And so you, you first, as you're thinking about your talents, you want to make sure that you really look at, you know, well, what am I good at? What am I comfortable at? Also, too, be careful about putting the bar too high. You know, maybe you sing, but you don't sing well enough for someone to send you out and do concerts for people. You know, you can carry a tune in a bucket, but you're not a soloist. There's lots of people like that. And then you have to ask yourself, well, all right, best use of this talent, what is it? I don't know, maybe you'll find yourself in the choir here later at some point. I don't know. But what is the best use of that? So as, we, as, you, as, you, as you go on here over the next couple of weeks, all I need you to do is, and myself too included, is to ask, okay, time and talent. That's what we're focusing on, just time and talent, not the money side of it. Um, but, you know, time and talent. What talents do I have? What time do I have? What's the best use of all that? In two weeks, we're going to ask you, if you want, to make a commitment to some volunteer work here at the parish. And if you do that, that's terrific. But I don't want you to think that that's the goal of the, of the campaign. The goal is for us to do better in stewardship. If the good Lord leads you to time and talent being used someplace else, something not part of our church, that's fine. That's fine. We're still just growing. So let me close with just a, an example, I think a terrific example, of the use of time and talent. It, it is my uh, example from my dad. Um, dad was a real faithful guy, but you didn't pick it up, if you will, in normal ways. We did not, as a family, gather, for example, to pray together. Grace at meals, we absolutely went to church every Sunday. There's no doubt about that. But I saw my dad's faith in a lot of really small ways. 
when I was in college, I'm pretty sure that's when he started doing it, he had noticed in the church that we attended the pew racks. You know, there was the hymnal, a place for uh, envelopes, a little place for pencils and things like that. It was always crazy disorganized. The pencils would either be missing or the lead would be broken, things like that. My dad was a laryngectomy, meaning he did not have a voice box. And so he, I think as a younger man, had a lot of leadership uh, talent. But he couldn't do that anymore, couldn't, couldn't talk in front of a group. And so he channeled his talents, if you will, towards things like this. He went to the minister and pointed out that this seemed to him to be a need. This, these needed to be taken care of. And the minister gave him permission to do it. So every Monday, about 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, I understand, my dad would show up with a little tray he had made, had all the different kinds of envelopes that needed to be put in the pew. He had freshly sharpened little pencils there. And he would sit in the first pew at the first rack, and he'd fix it, and then he'd go to the next rack, and he'd just work his way all the way along. My dad was good at stuff like that. He had a talent for being very patient with those kind of jobs. Most of us, you know, we get through three, four pews, we're like, when's this ever going to end? But dad loved it. He also told me he enjoyed so much the quiet of the church, just being there in the presence of God. That's just a, an example of someone who said, well, what's a good use of my time? Two hours, probably what it took him, two hours on a Monday morning? Ah, uh, yeah, we'll help the church out. And, and talent? You wouldn't think straightening pews is a talent, but it is. It is. And so our task, your task, my task, over the next couple of weeks, is just to ask the good Lord, I want to be a better steward of what you have given to me. What do you want me to do?